my channel. Today I am going to be doing quite a few different things, like all of my videos lately. I feel like this is turning into a vlogging channel, even though there's no way I would actually do an actual vlogging channel thing. That would be way too terrifying. But today I have some plant things to do. I need to rearrange some plants. I need to take care of some mealybugs. And I also need to plant some seeds because I had some seeds already planted, but it was pretty cold for a while, so they didn't come up, but then once it did warm up, they were starting to sprout, and they got really cold, and most of them died. So I need to go ahead and replant some, which, I mean, when you're planting things in January, it's not necessarily a guarantee that everything is gonna go well. So even though I do have a cover for my plants, of course, the really young seedlings did not make it when it got pretty darn cold for another week. But I think it should be staying pretty warm now, so I'm going to go ahead and give it another shot and see what all I can get to come up. Last year, I had quite a lot of produce already at this time of the year. I was getting lots of lettuce and radishes. I didn't do so well with my peas, but that's because I'm really lazy with peas and I forget about them and they're a little bit different. They take a little bit more finessing for me. Anyways, we're going to be planting also my favorite kinds of carrots. Oh, that reminds me. So we're getting close to 2,000 subscribers and I want to do a giveaway for that. It will be a US-based giveaway only. I will let you guys decide kind of probably what you want. I was thinking about maybe doing a macrame and some seeds, maybe throwing in my favorite kinds of gloves if that's something you guys think would be fun. Um, otherwise, I'll probably just do macrame and my favorite seeds. So I'm going to be including my favorite carrots that I just absolutely love because they're little round carrots and they do great in containers, for me anyways. And they're really actually the only kind of carrots that I can grow really well. But that's because I'm a very lazy gardener and I forget about my garden and it has to be um, very easy plants. <laughs> if that's something that you want to see, let me know, I guess, and I'll make an actual better announcement sort of a thing once we get to 2,000 subscribers. We're at almost 1,700 now, so I figure maybe in a few more months we can get to 2,000. So, um, yeah, look forward to that, I guess. Also, uh, I'm drinking this stash tea. It's a lemon ginger, and it's so good. I got it in my Sips by Box this month. Um, which I have a coupon code in the description box for $5 off a box. It doesn't give me any kickback, but if you're interested, I'll put it in the description box. But I really like a lot of stash teas. Not all of them, like every brand has certain teas that I really like and other ones that I don't like. But this lemon ginger is a really nice lemon ginger. It's not overpowering and not too strong, and I don't really have to worry about it oversteeping. And I just, I find it really nice this time of year. It's almost spring. And also, it's still cold season, so it's just a good tea and I like it. I've been yammering for five minutes, oh my goodness. I'm either going to make a pillow, or I'm going to work on my cross stitch, or I'm going to color. I don't know, whichever one I feel like doing, might do multiples of those. If you guys like those kinds of things and you want to see separate videos on just things like that, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you want to see something that's just me sewing or just me coloring or whatever, let me know. <laughs> and because usually those kinds of videos don't do so good, so I figure most people won't really care. But my subscribers, all of you guys, tend to care a little bit more, so I want to know what you want, I guess. Also, I need to take care of some plants because I have got mealybugs on this jasmine plant that has been so annoying. Mealybugs spread to only one of my plants, thank goodness, because it took me forever to actually take down the silly plant because it was all twisted around and I was being lazy. So yeah. Also I am going to be moving some plants back around and I think that is all. So hopefully I can get that all done today and we might even paint a birdhouse. I don't know. We got a busy day ahead of us. So first we're going to go and head into my craft room situation because it's a situation. <laughs> As you can see, I have added more plants. <laughs> Let's back up just a smidgen. The Hoya, there, that Hoya in 
the philodendron or whatever it's called now. Both of those were in my living room. You know, they're, they've always been in the same place. Also the pineapple plant is down yonder. Okay, so this is an Eastern window behind me. And this Hoya, it is doing so good over in this spot. Since I moved it here, it has so much more new growth and it just seems really happy. I think it likes this really good morning light. I need to move my philodendron, I think, over into the other room, but I'm going to keep this Hoya over here for now. It's right with my Sansevieria, even though I like to use this spot, but this spot usually ends up with plant projects that I'm working on anyways. And I have a little leaf that's right, right here on the, this table has leaves basically and I can pop up the leaf if I need any extra room and the Hoya seems to not mind that but we must move this. Right now it's on the stool that it's been on for like a long time. Since the Hoya is since the Hoya is on the table now it doesn't need the stool so I'm going to move the philodendron onto the stool the, not the stool like the ladder ladder stool, step stool, whatever that the Hoya was on. And I'm gonna see if it'll fit and work with the chair that I have. Otherwise the chair's gonna have to go upstairs. Oh my gosh, you're so happy. Oh. That chair, I actually got it intending to put it in my room and because I, <laughs> I really like it even though it's a little worse for wear, but I really like it. <laughs> so I don't know if I like it. Let me know if you like it. Um, but it seems like everyone likes having a chair there and they keep using it. I moved all the plants over because I needed extra seating over here for some birthday parties that we had. So anyways, yeah. That chair that I reupholstered, I put it where this chair normally is, over by my fireplace. And so I don't really have a place for that chair, but I love this chair. So, I don't know, let me know what you think. And let me know if you think I should move it. If it becomes a problem, like if the plant keeps getting knocked around, then I'll move it anyways. And then maybe I'll put another plant there. <laughs> Oh, we'll see. <laughs> I could put my rubber tree in there or one of my monsteras. See, there's a balloon, right? Parties. Remember how up here I had some plants hanging up? Well, the jasmine was all tangled up up there and it got mealybugs. This one was down below it and it got a few mealybugs, but for the most part, it's doing okay. This is a Senencio Jacobsenii. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one down again. I already sprayed it down a little bit, but I want to give it another better spray outside so I can get all the little nooks and crannies of this. I just have this in my laundry room away from all my plants. It's like in the middle of the floor because I'm to like look at this, it's so bad. That's just a big cluster of mealybugs. It's just all over this poor plant. So there's really basically just this and this alive, but not even really. Ugh, it's terrible. This is the kind of insecticidal soap that I use. This one is cheaper than all the other brands. It's like not quite six dollars for this container and it works pretty good and it's also good for organic stuff it's not going to be harmful or toxic to anything and it doesn't smell bad whereas when i use like neem i usually end up getting mold afterwards too and it smells horrible so i like to use this um yeah i get it at lowe's Mm. 
Now this is going to go in the washing machine, but I gotta tighten it up a little bit. But I wanna put it through the washing machine just so that way I can get everything out of it. Um, you know, make sure that there's nothing hiding, especially up here. There. I don't have any lettuce or my favorite carrot seeds. So I'm going to be planting some, some peas and I have some cherry radishes. Some of these seeds were my great grandpa's, so I'm not sure if all of them are going to sprout. Um, I think that these ones especially were his, but I'm going to try. And I have some beets and some Swiss chard. I know the Swiss chard will come up, it always does, and the beets always do, and the carrots, but radishes always come up first, of course, and they're just so fun to plant. My neighbors were being really noisy, so I thought that instead of actually showing you me planting seeds, I thought I would actually show you the layout of my garden bed. I do square foot gardening. This is one of my garden beds. This is the only one that I'm using at the moment because it's too cold really to use the other one. And um, yeah, everything else goes in my perennial garden, like my currants and my walking onions and strawberries, and then other things go in pots. This is just my garden bed that actually does fairly well for me. And I do the same thing every year in it. What I have is a seven foot by two and a half foot garden bed and this is shown for you in inches. This is seven inches and then this is two and a half inches. Of course I have it marked as feet. Right here this is actually a whole spot that I use for lettuce in the springtime and then once I've been harvesting it I harvest up here and then when it's warm enough then I can go in and I can grow peppers and I like to grow other kinds of things underneath the peppers too sometimes. Other times I will just make space for the peppers and I will keep some lettuce down there so that way I can maintain some of the moisture in the soil a little bit better. I do have a drip system for it but um, and it goes off like twice a day I think in the middle of the summer but it's just nice to be able to find ways to conserve more water so that way the garden bed can do better. And my lettuce, I will usually have that in here until sometime in July. It just depends on how well it works. Whenever it gets too hot and it turns bitter, that's when I pull it and then I cover it in mulch. And I'll wait until late August and I'll plant lettuce again. Right here is where I plant pansies or violets. And I like to plant those there because they're springy and they're beautiful and also you can eat them so it's just a fun little place to have them and I'll sometimes get them up in the lettuce a little bit too because they just look so cute popping their heads through the lettuce and so right here I have a bar that is just I have a bar back here and a bar right here that I use to basically keep my hoop house up and then this one I use to put a trellis on so that way my peas can grow up it. And that's just kind of how I mark the spaces in my garden bed as well. It just helps me keep track of everything and it's just a visual marker for when there's nothing growing. And right here in here, these bigger circles, is thyme that I keep in the garden bed. It's been there about three years now I think and it's been growing well. Maybe it's only been two years. I no, I think it's three years that these have been in there. This will be the third year. They've done great for me. They come back year after year. They're the only green thing in there all winter, unless I actually have my hoop house over it. Then all you see is plastic, but I have tons of stuff growing underneath. It's wonderful. Sometimes I like to grow kale right here, so that way it grows up nice and tall in the summer and it can shade my carrots and my beets during the really hot time of the season. I have radishes, carrots, and beets. I have a smaller section for my radishes because I don't need as many radishes as I do the carrots and the beets. And I grow these two in rows, whereas the beets, I still grow them in rows, but I grow them more like you would cook cookies on a cookie pan where they're staggered a little bit so that way they're not quite touching and they have enough room, but they're as close together as possible. With my carrots, I actually plant as many carrots, like I just sprinkle them in the rows and I let Thomas thin them out so that way he can get lots of little tiny baby carrots and it makes it really fun for him. And then we still have lots of other carrots throughout the rest of the season. So I will usually grow all three of these rows all the way back to the peas, but then I will start harvesting them uh, back here first so that way I have room for tomatoes. 
Once the peas are done, then I can take those down and the tomatoes can be tied up onto the trellis. That way it saves me from having to have tomato cages and that way it saves some extra room. And so the radishes here, once those are done, I like to plant watermelons from seed. I do best growing those from seed here and it's just fun having something growing crazy out on the ground. And I like to plant cucumbers over by the beets over in here. So I'll make a little spot, I'll harvest some beets and then I'll grow some cucumbers. Right now I have Swiss chard back here and maybe I'll do other types of greens for a while. I'm not really sure. There's lots of different kinds of greens that do well throughout the summer and I'd like to try more of them. These little circles, all of those are marigolds. I like to plant marigolds. I do like three on each corner and then I'll do a couple along the sides and that just really helps to keep pests away. I also like to plant sweet alyssum around on the corners and by the time they just look so beautiful getting billowy and trailing and they're just gorgeous. I love sweet alyssum. Plus they attract pollinators which is wonderful. So that is my garden bed and if you have any questions about it please do ask in the comment section below. And then over here, don't worry about that, that's just eventually I would like to have two more garden beds. So I hope that this was helpful. So I need to measure this all out to make sure how much fabric I had. And I ended up having just the perfect amount of fabric. I only had to cut off a little bit for the length, but then I remembered that I needed to wash it. <laughs> it's always very important to wash your fabrics before you start a sewing project. And so while that washed, I decided to work on a picture. I hadn't done anything with my regular colored pencils for a while, so I decided to do this drawing and I just did the shading on the horse or the unicorn with some black and then I blended it out and I just worked on this lady and her hair ended up looking pretty awful <laughs> and so I took a break for a little while. I ended up actually going to my mom's and eating lots of chocolate and washing Sanditon. When I came back, it was too dark to keep filming, but I did keep working on the hair and made it not look like literal baby poop. <laughs> it was really bad. And so it ended up turning out a lot better. And so I just colored in everything else. I wanted everything to go really well together. I'm not sure if I really like how the sleeve turned out, but you know, it was okay. It was really fun to practice coloring with colored pencils for the first time in a while since I've been a little obsessed with my watercolor pencils and it was just really nice to get back to something that was so familiar and blending with my old techniques and things. Which it's not as easy as the watercolor pencils are for me now, but it's still really fun. So now I just needed to even out all of the sides because of course when this was cut, it wasn't cut perfectly straight. So I just needed to straighten everything out. After I pinned the sides to make them all even, I measured it out and I drew a line all along so that way it would be nice and straight. And then I trimmed it up a bit of course, but I went and I folded everything in so that way I could trace my lines and I made sure everything was good and straight and it ended up working out really well. I was surprised because usually I come up with these ideas and they don't work out so well. And so I like to sew up two sides and then I sewed along on the bottom because I wanted to have a nice crisp edge rather than not sewing that bottom part because I didn't really have to but I wanted to so that way it wouldn't be round, it would be more squared. And so then I went and I sewed the top. I went in one way and then I stopped sewing and I went on the other side and I went in to where I had the middle part was where I could stuff it because I just like making my corners that way. They seem crisper to me. I don't know, it's just what I do. 
And so of course I flipped everything inside out or right side out rather, and I just stuffed it. It's best to work with smaller pieces, but I wasn't doing that good of a job and I, I don't know. I wanted to make it extra super stiff. I ended up stuffing this a little bit lumpy, but I asked you guys on Instagram on how to fix it and you said that if I combed it out and I used smaller pieces, then it wouldn't be so lumpy. So next time I'm definitely going to try that better. So I just used a ladder stitch to stitch this closed. There's lots of tutorials on this. It's super easy and I really suggest that you just try it because it's one of the easiest things. It seems intimidating, but it's really actually very easy. And what I do is after I do my knot at the end to finish it, is I push the needle through and I bring it back up and cut it so that way the knot goes through to the bottom like the underside of it and so that way it becomes more invisible. So this pillow isn't actually going to stay in my room but my mom's room is she tends to do actually blues and yellows but she also likes to have lots of pinks too and she has these little flower knick-knacky things that are just really cute and I think that this will look really nice in her room. I always rummage through the remnant section at uh, Hobby Lobby just so that way I can find little scraps of things for stuff that I need. I found this and it was a perfect size to make a lumbar pillow and that's something that I thought she could use in her room because she has lots of pillows but she doesn't have a really big long one like this and also her dog <laughs> likes to go up high on the pillows and sleep on them and I thought that she might like this too. So I made it nice and stiff so that way Star could be on it and it's like the perfect size because she's a, she's a little dog <laughs> so she could fit on here perfectly but also nice and stiff so that way it's good back support for my mom. So yeah, I hope you have a really great week and I should be getting back to more of a regular schedule again. Um, and Like I tend to post on Sundays and an occasional video on Wednesdays, but I've been pretty busy so I've been posting my regular videos on Wednesdays instead. So we might be getting back to things soon hopefully so i'll have my regular videos on sunday of course and i've been thinking about maybe doing coloring kinds of things on wednesday or it's just like extra projects like that that are for fun i guess that's all and i will talk to you later bye